All right, welcome back. We're on problem 51 of chapter 10. So we're moving along. So this is the second uh, question out of a total of four that we're going to do for chapter 10. And they're going to move on to chapter 11, then 12, then 14. And hopefully we'll get 16 questions uploaded to YouTube, which would be great. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So problem 51, let's go ahead and write it. Problem 51 states, a child with a mass of 40 kilograms sits on the edge of a merry-go-round at a distance of 3 meters from its axis of rotation. The merry-go-round accelerates from rest up to 0 0.4 revolutions per second in 10 seconds. If the coefficient of static friction between the child and the surface of the merry-go-round is 0 0.6, does the child fall off before 5 seconds? So, looks like we are going to have to do friction on these, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, uh, let's go ahead and write down everything we know, like usual. We always try to stay consistent with the process, right? So, um, so the first thing we know is that the mass of the child is 40 kilograms. So it's going to be helpful when we find out the weight and then we'll see if we slide off. Um, and then the distance, so this is our r, the distance away from the axis of rotation is 3 meters. Uh, and then it accelerates from rest to 0 0.4 revolutions per second. So it looks like we're, giving, we're given a uh, initial omega, which is 0. And then a final, which is 0 0.4 revolutions per second, which we need to convert. So let's go ahead and do that. So revolutions per second, so we multiply by 2 pi radians, um, rads, over 1 revolution. These cancel. So it's just a multiplication problem. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So this should be 0 0.8 pi, right pi, pi radians per second. Um, so yeah, that's our final omega. So now what we want to do is write down t as well. Can't forget about t. t equals 10 seconds. So this is the time it takes to speed up to this uh, final omega, angular velocity. Um, and then we're also given the static friction. So our mu sub s equals 0 0.6. I forget what the term is for these kind of values, but it doesn't have a unit. What we need to do now is calculate alpha. So, in order to calculate alpha, we have to get, um, we can calculate alpha a bunch of different ways, but we're going to go ahead and use the, um, the angular kinematic equations for this. So, let's go ahead and open our formula sheet, made sure not to cause an issue like last time where it wasn't showing. So, if we want to find our angular acceleration, we can go ahead and use this formula. Um, because we have time, we have our initial, we have our final omega. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, we can just set this equal um, to omega final minus omega initial divided by t. That's just isolating, I'm just kind of going ahead. Um, and there's no parts to this, so it's just the entire problem. We're not going to write part A or anything like that. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and plug everything in. So our initial omega was 0. So this means it's going to be speeding up, right? No negative omega in here. And we have... Um, 
Yeah, then we have uh, the final omega, which is 0 0.8 pi. And then we have t, which is 10. So let's go ahead and do this. Put it in our calculator. And after that, we will see that we get an angular acceleration. I don't know why they had angular velocity units here. You see that? Um, but anyways, our answer is 0 0.25. Um, radians per second squared. So, that is our alpha. And the whole idea of this uh, question is to find out what the total translational acceleration is, and then you can use the F equals MA equation with that acceleration and the mass of the child to find out um, what that force would be. Um, but we need to use that specific time. So we had to find this alpha first and then we can uh, apply it with that specific time and find out what our omega would be. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's see. So yeah, let's go ahead and find omega, right? Because we need omega to find the tangential acceleration at t equals five. So if we f set omega, if we remember our angular kinematic equations or relations, um, then we know omega is equal, oh sorry, this is unrelated. Um, we know omega is equal to alpha times time, right? This is just, it's the same thing as V equals AT, you know? If we assume that uh, that the initial velocity was zero, which it is. So yeah, let's go ahead and solve for this. So we have our alpha it is 0 0.25 meter or radians per second squared. And our T here is five, because that's a, uh, that's the time we're asking about. That's the interval. We're saying, are they going to fall off before t equals 5? So if we find the maximum uh, force that is going to be applied to the child, then we'll be able to answer that question. So 1 fourth of 5 is... one point two five. So the omega will be 1.25 radians per second. So now we can go ahead and go to our formula sheet and we can see that if we want to get our tangential acceleration, so we need both these variables, our tangential acceleration and our uh, centripetal acceleration. Obviously we already have um, our omega our omega, but we have to find, um, wait, hold on, oh no, sorry, we just found our omega. So yeah, we can now find our uh, centripetal acceleration, and we can already find our uh, tangential acceleration. So let's go ahead and do that. So we saw that uh, a sub c equals r omega squared, and we saw that a sub t equals alpha times time. Sorry, what am I saying? Not times time. Times the radius, right? Yes, okay. So let's go ahead and plug everything in because we already know what the r is, what omega is. We just found that. Um, so yeah. So for centripetal acceleration, we'll do um, it was, R was 3 meters, looks like, and our omega is 1.25, and we have to square that, and then 
a right, sub t. We're kind of doing them both at the same time because they're relatively easy. Uh, they're just multiplication, right? Um, so our alpha, we found that earlier, that was 0 0.25 radians per second squared. And that's, uh, that's not going to increase with time, right? We're always going to have that acceleration. Unless we're talking about a jerk or a jolt, I guess, or ang angular jerk or jolt, I don't know. Um, but yeah, 0 0.25 radians per second squared. And then, damn, sorry, I don't want to have the units there. Um, and then we want to have r, which is 3. So yeah, let's go ahead and solve these. So for the centripetal, it's just 3 times 1.25 squared. And we get a value of a sub c equals 4.687. Uh, I'm just going to keep uh, three decimal places, four sig figs for each of these until uh, our final uh, answer. So then we have a sub t equals one fourth of three, which is 0.75 meters per second squared. So since these are uh, translational values, linear acceleration, um, they're going to be meters per second squared. Even though they do describe a rotating object. So, hold on. Let's see, what did we do wrong? Oh wait, we didn't do anything wrong. Why did I get a wrong answer? I'm trying to look at the solution here, it's saying 1 fourth of 3 is 1.9? Really? Um, not sure if this is just not sure what's going on here. Let's try it again, I guess. I mean, no, I just they just put the wrong answer on there, so. Right, because R, we have R, it's three. We have alpha, we got 0 0.25. So we multiply those together, it does not equal that. So I guess we're gonna have to go, our, go down our own path because <laughs> the solution's wrong. Uh, evidently. Um, let's just try one more time. Yeah, I'm still getting 0.75 meters per second squared. So yeah, let's just go ahead and move on. Um, we're gonna, still going to follow the same process, um, but just know that this solution doesn't seem to be correct. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, find the total magnitude. So we have a sub c and a sub t. You can think of a sub c as your y, and uh, y component, and your a sub t as your x component. So using Pythagorean theorem, we can go ahead and find the total magnitude and the direction. Actually, we don't need the direction. Um, we just need the magnitude. So let's go ahead and plug our values in. 4.6. Not two points. Um, so 4.2, 4.687 squared. And then our other value, it doesn't seem to match up. And if you guys do get the same value as the solution, go ahead and use it. I probably made a mistake. But we're just going to use this value for now. Um, so yeah, this is what you want to have set up. And now we're going to calculate the total magnitude. So I got 
a magnitude of 4.74. Um, see, did they get that? No, they got 5.1. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be different from now on since we're using different values. Um, but yeah, that is the total magnitude for these values. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and since this is your acceleration, you're going to apply this on a mass, and that way you can calculate the force. So remember, back from the beginning, the beginning of time, we learned about F equals ma. So this acceleration right here is describing an acceleration acting on the mass of the child. So the mass of the child is 40 kilograms, and the acceleration is 4.74 meters per second squared, so we can find the force. You can think of this as the linear acceleration, or the linear force, I guess. I don't know. Kind of, kind of abstract. Um, I guess it'd be like the centrifugal force. That's what it'd be. Centrifugal force, so 4.74. Let's go ahead and write this out. So we know the mass of the child is 40 kilograms. So 40 kgs. So 40 times 4.74. So if we calculate this, put in our calculator, we get F equals 1.8. Eight, nine. Um, I guess we'll keep precision, so we'll keep three decimal places, and then times ten to the second. So that is our force in newtons acting on the child. So the centrifugal force, fake force, as they tell us, but you can quantify it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and find our friction force, so our maximum friction force before we start sliding, before we transition into kinetic uh, friction, we want to find the static friction, the static friction force, so that's simply mu sub s times the normal force, so we can represent that as n, and we know the normal force is the same as the weight force, and that is mass times gravity of the object. So we were given this static friction force all the way back. It was uh, 0 0.6. So let me just actually write an equation here so it's easy to understand. So let's say F sub S equals, and then we can plug in our values. So 0 0.6 times 40, and then times 9.81. So we don't really need to have a negative in the gravity because we're just comparing magnitudes here. So 0 0.6 times 40 and then times 9.81. So yeah, this force is definitely above what we have. And it's uh, precisely 2.35, four times 10 to the one to the first, and we see that our um, our centrifugal force is less than the static friction force, the maximum static friction. So that means if it's less than or equal to F uh, of Fs of our force, then it's not going to move. It's not going to slide. Um, and we can go back to our formula sheet to look at that just to make sure. Um, so yeah, you see up here, um, we see that the uh, the friction force always is less than or equal to mu static times the normal force, and that's what we just calculated. So yeah, um, and that is pretty much it. We conclude that the child will not slide off the merry-go-round, and yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you so, so much for you guys uh, for watching. If you found it helpful, make sure to like, to hit the like button and subscribe, and I will get started.
on 56 and 71, and that will be the end of chapter 10. We'll move on to chapter 11, 12, and 14. All right, and that's it. Bye.